Uh, hi guys, in this video I wanted to show you my editing uh, machine uh, or the computer that handles most of my work on films and music videos. I, very often I get asked what kind of computer I should get uh, to be able to do the kind of effects and editing that, you know, that I do in my productions. So um, usually I'll recommend to people just get a good PC, uh, you know, runs Windows, it's okay, and, and something that has a really good graphics card. I, however, though, actually do majority of my work uh, on a laptop, and the reason is because I travel a lot. And I'm actually going to be traveling for the next three months with the Today Cine School. Uh, it's like a filmmaking workshop that I'm doing all over U.S., Canada, uh, and, uh, and Europe. Uh, if you guys are interested in attending, you know, getting to meet me, shoot, shooting some stuff, cool stuff with me, learning some tips and tricks, asking me questions, uh, make sure you guys check the info in the description of this video. Uh, anyway, so like I said, I travel a lot uh, and because of that it's just not realistic for me to haul my big PC around with me. So that's why I'm, uh, I work usually off of laptops. So here is actually my uh, old, old laptop. It's about, it's going to be almost two years old now. And it's a MSI laptop and it's a MSI GT70. It has an Intel Core i7 third generation and has an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 675 uh, graphics card. Uh, as, as you can see, the graphics card is pretty good, and that's sort of the, like I said, the, the main thing that's going to handle most of the, 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 the work that the computer is going to do. So if you have a good graphics card, you really don't, you know, don't have to worry too much about the rest of the specs of the computer. Um, as you can see, I have my hard drive connected here. I'm actually copying some stuff because uh, today I also got a new laptop, which is also an MSI, and it's, uh, this one is the GT7220. QF Apache Pro, something like that. They have a lot of different models. And this one's actually on sale right now for, I believe it was $1,200. Uh, and there's different variations, config configurations of this laptop. What I like about it is it's very thin, as you can see. Uh, it's actually, you know, very, much lighter than my older laptop. Now my old laptop actually works really well. Um, I just needed, like I said, something smaller and something even more portable, uh, lighter. And also this one has an even better cooling system. So the fans don't, are not as loud as my previous laptop. Uh, and there's two of them and they really, you know, uh, like I said, dissipate the, the heat from the computer. And it's very important, especially with laptops, to make sure that the laptop does not overheat. So I also have, as you can notice here, a cooling pad. So you can, you know, and most of the cooling pads will do a decent job. So make sure you get something with a, uh, like that basically allows you to plug it into a USB uh, port, and that will power the cooling pad and it has fans in there and just blows extra cold air uh, into the, the the laptop. And the reason why I say you want to make sure you keep the laptop cool is because. Um, you know, if, uh, with a PC, for example, or a desktop computer, you don't have to worry about that as much, simply because, uh, you know, it's a bigger computer, the, 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 the computer parts and the graphics card are not as squeezed in, you know, these, these tiny little spaces and, and right next to each other, so the heat kind of just naturally dissipates, you know, a lot better. Whereas in a laptop, it's very, very important to keep it cool. Um, so that's that's one tip I'll give you guys. Uh, again, if you guys want information about this laptop or similar ones, you know where you can get it, best deals. Again, check the link in the description of this video. Uh, and if you guys want, I can kind of quickly show you how it works with the uh, with, with Adobe Premiere. Now, uh, this laptop, like I said, I just got it. I have not, you know, really upgraded anything. I just installed the software on there. Uh, whereas my old laptop. I kind of did a little bit of upgrading. So one thing I did is uh, I swapped out the main uh, hard drive. The main hard drive was actually um, uh, just a regular hard drive and I s switched it out for an SSD or a solid state drive. And the reason is because a solid state drive uh, is gonna, especially you know, if the solid state drive is, is your main C drive where your Windows and all your applications are on, it just simply means that uh, even if you have a really fast laptop, but if the, you know, if the hard drive is really slow, and when you start loading all the applications and windows, it's going to take forever. Whereas uh, having switched this laptop to, I guess, an SSD uh, has really sp sped things up. I mean, like windows literally starts within like five or six seconds. And even applications like when I, you know, like, like for example, Adobe Premiere usually takes a long time to load. On this laptop, actually, it loads up pretty quickly. All right, so let's go here to, to the new laptop and I'm just going to load up Premiere just to show you guys. Uh, now this one, like I said, I have not upgraded it, so it has just a standard hard drive, uh, which I'll probably end up upgrading to, uh, you know, to an SSD in the future. 
and it's very easy to do. Now, you know, if you don't want to do it yourself, you can actually buy a version of this with an SSD, but uh, I, I just prefer to buy my own. You can always save a few bucks and you're going to put in a bigger SSD than what the manufacturer offers. But anyways, as you can see, the, you know, Premiere loads in pretty quickly still. It's not, not horrible. Now, like I said, just my older laptop, because it has an SSD, loads in even faster. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, and then here, let me just load up one of the, the projects, show you this is all 4K footage. And I'll just play it and show you guys just how well it handles uh, 4K footage. So here's my project. Maybe play these shots here. Um, and let's just maybe make it full screen. And just play it. So as you can see, it plays 4K footage, you know, in full resolution here, no problem. Uh, actually, no, right, right now it's in the half res. So maybe let me pause it and switch it here. Okay, full resolution, play it again, and as you can see, even in 4K full resolution, it plays no problem. Um, yeah, so that's that's how it wor looks, that's how it works, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, some of you guys are telling me that, you know, you, you have a really good computer, so you bought it with top-of-the-line specs, and that you're still having problems editing uh, 4K footage in, uh, in your, you know, in, in, on your computer. Uh, that it ends up just getting really choppy and I'll tell you this there's a few things you want to make sure that you're not doing so one thing is uh, I always leave for example color correction to the last step because pretty much with any computer I mean even like the top top of the line computers uh, the second I start applying color correction it's gonna play okay but after a while it's gonna start slowing down because that's just basically a computer you know I, I found that with 4k footage pretty much any computer on the market these days is not going to be able to render out and calculate the, the color correction, you know, those filters in real time. So you want to basically edit without doing any color correction. Once you've done editing, then you like your edit and then you go on to the color correction, you know, visual effects and all that stuff. Uh, another tip is actually with just, for example, arranging your, your timeline. So, for example, if you have, let's say, a timeline where you can see, like, I put one clip here and then another and then maybe, you know, uh, you know, whatever, one more on top and I have like all these video tracks as you can see up here uh, That is going to create uh, problems for you because what's actually happening is The computer still has to load into the cache all of those clips underneath even though you're not really seeing them because they're covered by You know by the, by the, the, the tracks up here So really what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you kind of it, When you're editing you kind of want to keep your edit clean what I mean by that is I usually try not to uh, use more than, than two basically uh, video tracks, which is, you know, like I said, sometimes it's impossible because, you know, you have really complicated, you know, layers and all that stuff. But like I said, if I'm just doing editing for a film or a music video, all I really need to do is just go from shot to shot. So if I basically can, you know, just go and keep it all, with, you know, even on one, for example, video to time, like a layer here or a video track, then I'll just do that if you know if I have to sometimes put in something on the second one I'll do it but I, I'll just tell you that I noticed the second you start layering up the stuff and you have too many clips you know on the here it's gonna slow everything down so that's one tip I've even managed to edit like you know like for example my film United Who Stand if you guys seen the behind the scenes you know that I've even shot a majority of that film on the on the red epic camera and 5k I believe 5 or 6k so definitely you know like I said, these kind of laptops can handle that uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. It's just about, like I said, making sure you keep the computer uh, cool. So make sure you get a, a nice cooling pad. Uh, make sure you don't go crazy on the timeline. You don't put too many video tracks. Make sure you don't apply effects or color filters, application, things like that before you're done editing because it's just going to slow your editing down. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, anyways, uh, if you guys want more information, again, all the links in the description of this video. And definitely, if you guys want to join me for the, the two-day cine fil filmmaking workshops that I'm doing uh, all over US, Canada, and uh, Europe, uh, then check uh, the website, the official website, which again, I'll put the link for it below. Uh, there's still, I believe, some discounts for some of the tickets in, in, in certain cities, I believe, have sold out already, but there's still some, some cities that tickets are available. So go over there, make sure you guys get a ticket before uh, it's too late. And I hope to see you guys at the, at the workshop. Uh, anyways, that's it for, for now. Uh, my name is Tom Antos and once again, to find all the information uh, about any of the films, projects, things like that, including this video, you can go uh, to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time.